And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, <clears throat> and, if, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother here in the temple. Aim, coming to coming to us at, fresh off the heels of the near completion of Across a Thousand Dead Worlds and the and the creator of Sacrifice, an incense and iron RPG, which we covered earlier this month and kind and kind of eviscerated earlier this month. The one the one and only Alex T. How you doing today, man? Hey. Thanks for having me back. Doing great. How about you? Mm -hmm. I am. Do I'm doing good. It's just a few days away before, um, so before summer officially ends. Yeah, I cannot wait. <laughs> it's been it's been a hard one. Mm -hmm. So, Og, I'd like to start with the origins. Um, when it comes to sacrifice, was this something you had been kicking around for a while while you were working on Across a Thousand Dead Worlds? I really need to find a way to summarize that name. <laughs> yeah, so so do do we all? Yeah. So um, about sacrifice, actually, no, the the uh, quite the opposite. It was it's complete, completely a kind of a palate cleanser project. Uh, I was. Uh, just I had just finished um, across a thousand dead worlds, and I started working on my next larger solo project, which is called Empire Undying, mm -hmm. which is more it's more fantasy oriented and it's quite a big undertaking. So, so yeah, I was just I'm mostly focused right now these days in, in Empire Undying, and and that's my main. My main gig for the next few months mm -hmm. so um but the thing is that i just well after the death of kentaro miura the author of berserk i said okay what the hell i hadn't been up today with with the manga in uh, almost <laughs> over that decade i mean last time i i read anything was in the late 90s probably so i was really 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 behind <laughs> so i decided to to catch up and I mean, I, I absolutely loved it again, once again, because it was always one of my favorite mangas. It was a big reference for me mm -hmm. and the tone for dark fantasy and all that. And it's just, it's just brutal. It's just perfect. It's still amazing. So I devoured it. I, I read the whole thing up to basically the end, the, the current number. I, maybe I'm missing a couple of numbers. Uh, of the latest uh, chapters, but uh, yeah, I read it like in two weeks, so <laughs> it was a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. And well, once I was done, it's like okay, I, I need to I need to make a game <laughs> from this. I, I need to get out of my system. So so I decided to just went ahead. I went ahead and did it. It was it was a bit of a crazy thing because I decided. Uh, wrote and and laid the whole thing and laid it out in in a month so it was very 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 intense and yeah it was just like a spur of a moment thing it just happened and and i made it happen in a month so i'm i'm pretty proud of it mm -hmm. so when now um this is for whatever reason this is the month that kickstarter chose to do zine quest and I, yeah. I was I was a bit curious if if that w if that was something that spurned it on or if that was just coincidence since sacrifice is a light is a significantly lighter game. Yeah, no, and, uh, I I wasn't really considering participating in in Zine Quest or anything. It was just it was just coincidence. I wanted to get it out for my patron supporters and. And well, I, I it's now available by um, Drive Through RPG and itch.io, my own website, and it's soon going to be available on. We're making offset 
print copies as well. So I don't know. It's just the thing is slowly snowballing. A lot of people are loving it. There's some folks even making a Foundry module for it. So yeah, it's it seems people are are liking it. So uh, I'm very happy with it. So yeah, co completely coincidence. I didn't. I wasn't really aware about ZineQuest or anything. Which is f is fair. It's just a um, it's just an amusing coincidence. Yeah. Um, but was in was there an er, was there an earlier draft of it that was a little that was a little bit closer to uh to old school D twenty than the than the current iteration? Nope, <laughs> there's no draft. There's not, I just vomited the whole thing <laughs> in in a couple of weeks. Really, it was just. I locked myself up in in the room and wrote for hours and hours and hours every day. Yeah. So no, the, actually, now that I think of it, yeah, there is, there was a kind of draft because what I did is I took uh, most of my homebrew rules for my from my um, D and D campaign, the one I'm GMing for for quite a while now, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just. Slammed it into the berserk setting, basically. Added, changed it, a changed a few things around, added a few other things. But yeah, it's most of what you see there is my homebrew setting, mm -hmm. my my rules. I mean the 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 homebrew rules. Yeah, I can, which I can see some of that. I can see some of that DNA, as hmm. I, as I mentioned previously. Um, one thing, uh, one thing I I did find kind of in, I did find kind of interesting is the is the fact that you dis, is the fact that you decided to completely eschew doing any doing any sort of class system, which per, personally I'm perfectly fine I'm perfectly fine with as f f for reasons that I meant that I mentioned when we did when I did the Valley of the Judged episode and. Do mm -hmm. and um when we and um when we covered the Dark Souls five E from Steamforged, which has its problems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I went classless because I, I just always prefer classless games. I, I prefer the freedom and and the openness of a of a classless system. And I also thought it was a bit more fitting for something like Berserk, because otherwise, what are you going to do? Just have <laughs> maybe barbarian fighter and 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 rogue or assassin. I mean, that's a ranger. I don't know. I'm, you'll have to cut out a lot of. Well, of course, not if you go deeper into the setting and then when they add magic and all that stuff. Yeah, but uh, as you know, I I remove the magic also. It's it's closer to the. The first years of Berserk than than how it the is currently. Age. Yeah, yeah, it's closer to the Golden Age. Yeah, which is a is a smart move is a smart move to do, especially in, in case you plan on expanding it to utilize mag magic. Although, um, if you have if I have some ideas, yeah. <laughs> if you ever do that, um, I would. Now, I'm not going to tell you what to do on the matter, but I would strongly. Advise against using the Vancian model for magic. Oh no, 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 not gonna happen. That's another thing I, I'm not a fan of. So yeah, no, I will never do that. And I, I've been giving it uh, a bit of a thought of how to implement magic in, in sacrifice, and I'm not even sure I want, like caster, class or whatever. I mean, there are no classes, but. Uh, the the play style which has been a caster. I, I don't think I'm ever going to implement that in into sacrifice. What I'm thinking is adding some kind of uh, supernatural abilities closer to magic. I mean they feel like magic and all that, but it will be like a side thing. Your main your main character will always be focused on on the warrior aspect. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> all th I think. I honestly, I honestly think, in, I honestly think a smart, a smarter move would be to focus on, um, 
on some sort of creation system for magic items since well if you look at the source material as far as <laughs> as far as spells that's that's not that's there's not a whole lot of that going around but in terms of mat in terms of magic items like fet like fetishes and the like that is far more frequent yeah yeah it was I I don't know cre the cr direct creation of magic objects by the player. Um, it's not, not something not I I player, will want to. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I I'll have to think about all that. Is uh, right now I haven't really considered it. But uh, what I was considering was adding a bit of alchemy and that kind of thing. So that could lead into to later on uh, developing um, magic uh, items or I, don't know, I guess it could be linked some way but for now um, I'm, I'm taking it slow it's it's completely a side project for me I my like I mentioned my main my main goal is to get Empire Undying out after or across a thousand dead worlds mm -hmm. and and this is something I'm doing just for fun when I have and 20 minutes to sit down and write something different i do it because since i'm using the the 20s uh, rules it's very very simple very straightforward to create stuff for it and it's just fun it's like i said it's a, a small hobby side thing mm -hmm. yeah i can i can i can certainly get that um I was I was being a little bit facetious when I when I said that it's kind of disqualified from being an OSR game because you actually have feats and ways to custom <laughs> and ways to customize a martial character, but that's because I am extremely petty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I don't know. It's it sits somewhere in between OSR and a more modern D twenty games, I suppose. It's. It's uh, to be perfectly honest, it's like a mix of uh, AD and D Second Edition and and Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. I think uh, it takes elements from from those both of those editions, which are the two only editions I actually ever played. So mm -hmm. I, I skipped everything in between. <laughs> yeah, and the thing that the thing that I find the thing that I find funny with. With the with the with the approach here, is is um still ha is still having the, is through feats and proficiency still having as well as a skill system still having a degree of personalization because well if you if you look at old school D and D if you're playing a martial character there's not a whole lot you get <laughs> yeah yeah it's a bit uh, I, simple. Yeah. I had a whole I had a whole rant on Friday about once once again about this reputation that fighters have of being Babby's first character. <laughs> and um, I don't know. It's just uh, I I think it can get a bit boring sometimes. I, well, games like DCC, the Dungeon Crawl Classics, did it okay, but well, that's that's already far from AD and D. Um, Adding a bit of uh, more. I don't know, interesting gameplay to Warriors. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. If I'm being, if I'm being honest, I'm not... Int DCC was cute, was cute, but... <laughs> well, the magic system is fucking epic. I, I, I love it. It's really, really good. I I really, really enjoy it. And uh, it's a bit too gonzo for my taste overall, but I think it's a brilliant game. It's yeah. It has some really, really good ideas. Yeah, I, I like it, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I'd use DCC as a case of ma of making fighters interesting. Well, uh, the combat maneuvers it has and all that. I, I don't know. It, it, it at least it tries to give a uh, warrior something something else to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, yeah, there, yeah, there, it. There is to, there is to a point. I just feel like I just feel like it could have gone for it could have gone a bit further. Yeah, I, I suppose you can always add more and flesh it out a bit more. But I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know their design goals. <laughs> but yeah, with Sacrifice, I try to... Since the... Basically, all characters in Sacrifice are warriors. All you... And there's no magic, so it's like, okay, what what do I do? So that's why I added all the combat maneuvers and the feats to make it... But yeah, and to add, of course, the personalization that that it has to be there in, in my days in my opinion um, otherwise it's not fun to play a character if it's not something unique to to you mm -hmm. that's my opinion at least yeah i can i can certainly get i can certainly get that and something that something that's that i did that i will admit i did find I did find very interesting was the manu was the maneuver system that you have in this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everybody seems to to like it. <laughs> yeah. And I know I brought up the black hack when it came to the usage die chain, but yeah, I'm guess but I'm guessing DCC was a bigger influence. The usage die, um, I don't know it. Uh... I I can't. I mean, I, it's been around. Yeah, I think it did Black Hacks introduced it, but uh, but it's been around for s such a long time that I can't pinpoint. I mean, it's just one of those design things that are there, and I didn't think, oh, I'm going to take this idea from DCC or from the Black Hack or I, I think Forbidden Lands uses it as well. It was like, no, uh, it just uh, this tool exists. It fits for this, so I just I just took it. I, I wasn't trying to reference some other system or thinking about any other system. It was just like just another tool, and I th I thought it will be it will be a good fit to sim to s make a to s um make it a little bit simpler the inventory management and all that to keep track of, of the ammo and and all that stuff. Yeah, and to be, and to be fair the. To be fair, the Black Hack does a really good job of str of streamlining equipment using that usage die. Mm -hmm. oh, that and Five Torches Deep; those those are two games that really do a good job at at um, getting rid. I'm of I'm not the... familiar with with Five Torches Deep, so I, I don't know. I can't say it's a it's an interesting affair, especially when it comes to what pe what people refer to as neo clones, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I heard it was like a, a, an OSR attempt at 5e or something like that. No, it was like in Not between. Or, there. I wouldn't call it that. Uh, five, tor five torches deep is t is taking is taking the old school mechanics and just spin just spinning it in a significantly different way. Mm hmm. I'd ha I'd hesitate I'd hesitate to I'd hesitate to call I'd hesitate to call it a to call it akin to um to fi to five e oh it it um I mean some there are some core there are some core mechanics that are ba that are based around it and they do a they do a comparison in the core book but. Uh oh. that's that's as far as it that's as far as it goes. Although having a f although it although it having a more having a um a more lands a more landscape format ins instead of, instead of portrait does does mess with my OCD <laughs> when it yeah. comes to the book itself. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely something that stands out. Um. Sometimes quite literally. Yeah, exactly. Pretty, <laughs> it must I'm be a pain sure in the ass in the shelf. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you've had that shelf issue where there's a a um, bo a book that uses a landscape style and sticks out yeah, like a sore they, thumb on the shelf. Yes, I, I, I just put them aside with the coffee table books, and that's it. They have their own space in the in the shelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that? Is that like how you ha is that like how the new guy has to sit at the table in the corner? <laughs> yeah, basically, I suppose. Yeah. Oh. Now, I recall. I recall at the time that some that something we mentioned was the was um 
the whole th the whole thing with stamina very mu very much feeling like very much um feeling like it like the like it was like it could um it could venture a bit into be into being conservative especially with the cost of some of some of the maneuvers and obviously i appreciate the maneuvers being there it's just that i think we had said that some of them were a little bit pricey mm -hmm. um yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. if i'm not mis yeah, if I'm not mistaken you are you're you're taking steps on on reducing the cost of them Actually, the the PDF was already updated uh, shortly after your your review of, of the game. I went over it and I realized that yeah, some of the costs were a little bit too high, mm -hmm. and uh, I I reduced not all of them, but quite all probably most of them. They have a little bit lower costs now, and I adjusted a few other things. Mm -hmm. My original design idea for that and my design goal was maneuvers to be something that you couldn't spam so i was afraid that if they were too cheap people would just like okay why should i attack when i can do this amazing trick so i didn't want people to be all the time spamming the the maneuver the combat maneuvers so i might have overdone it and and put the cost uh, their, their cost a little bit too high their stamina stamina cost and yeah, the other issue you had, and well, not only you, uh, a few other people mentioned, was the fact that you ran out of stamina, and and that's it. And so I'm I'm actually adding some that I didn't I didn't change in the core rules yet, but I'm adding for the coming expansion. I'm I, I'm I'm adding some new feet, which basically allows you take take a step back step back and recover a little bit of stamina yeah i um i had made i had made the comparison to to the way to the way stamina works in say say a souls like mm -hmm. as a as a good frame of reference i mean you when they introduced weapon arts in dark souls 3 and and then and then later perfected the concept with ashes of war in elden ring yeah, it's an option that you ha that you have available, but it's not some, but um, it's not something you're going to be spamming. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's I think it's different on a tabletop RPG because you can literally just spam it. <laughs> spam it is quite. I think it's quite easy to just yeah. do the the same effective attack all the fucking time if you have the option, like a. Uh, uh, there's that uh, volley that I remember you guys liked uh, what you were discussing that volley uh, range attack which is basically AOE attack I mean why wouldn't you do that every time every turn if you have the chance why would you just shoot once with a normal attack when you can do volley every single turn until you run out of stamina so I was afraid people will do that and it's just it's it's boring and I didn't want to be a possibility so I, don't know. Uh, I i think we can we can play around with the balance me a bit more but uh, we'll see we'll, we'll see how things evolve depending on feedback i need to test it more myself and yeah i don't know we'll get there well, if, you, if you're open to suggestions as far as the control to make sure that people don't spam maneuvers um definitely you always al you could always and the, and i'm just i just came up with this in the last in the last five minutes but but possibly having it that that the more that the more that you keep you the more that you keep using you end up get you end up getting a slowly expanding um fumble range yeah that that kind of thing is interesting or maybe even increasing the cost of of of, of its use but the problem is that then that's more stuff to keep track of so yeah i mean the, I don't know. Uh, it's cool, and I personally don't mind because I like I like resource management. I like to keep track of stuff, and but some people want things to be a bit snappier and faster, especially combat. So if you ask them to keep track of yet another thing aside from the stamina, hit points, and all that, it's like I know a lot of people will say, "Just uh, fuck it, I'm not, I'm not doing this." 
So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll see. We'll see what I do. But yeah, it's a it's a good. I can always add those sort of things as optional rules. Yeah. <clears throat> it it was just, it was just something I thought I'd I thought I'd throw my hat in about. And when it came now, when it came to. When it came to when it came to com when it came to combat, um, has has any has anybody reported any um any cases of TPK happening? Nope, not not so far. I I had me personally when with my on I I tested solo. I I played a little bit of hex crawling by myself solo with with mythic and all that. So I haven't played it in, in a in a group or well actually the game is designed to be played uh, with just one GM and one player. But I haven't done that either. I just I'm playing it alone. And I had a couple of very close calls, but the, the thing is that with with luck, with the use of luck, you can just essentially run away from any deadly combat if you still have it. If, if you have one point of luck. Each each part member spends one point of luck, and you can retreat from any combat automatically. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a that's a little trick that I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, you can't obviously you can't do it more than once or twice every a day because you run out of luck in in a moment. Luck it's only recovered each you recover one luck one point of luck each time you rest. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's not something you can be doing all the time, but it certainly saved my life more than once. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a deadly game. The because the core uh, stats and all the all that kind of stuff, the 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 stat blocks from the enemies, all all that sort of thing is completely taken from AD and the Second Edition. Mm -hmm. And the and those those enemies were tough. They were very large groups. Which was like a, <laughs> a shock for me a, a few times. Like shit, I'm I'm not used to running into such large groups. And so yeah, at the beginning you do quite a fair of running away, and you have to be a bit more tactical about it. But I don't know, I I enjoy that. And anyway, the GM can always adapt those things on the fly. It's it's very very easy. Yeah. And one. We had we had mentioned this we had mentioned this earlier, but much but much like the sort much like the inspiration, it there's def there definitely seems to be a vibe towards the um, Hundred Years War er era of Eastern Europe. Mm, yeah, I suppose. No, well, it wasn't it wasn't in Eastern Europe I, as far as I remember. The One Hundred Years War. Um. Oh. Wasn't it between France and the UK? If I remember correctly. I I I, I, I honestly forgot, but uh, I think it was more around Central Europe. In any case, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What well, it was, oh. it was England and France, though. Because because of the because of the way diplomacy worked in those in those days, um, a bunch of other people got involved. Yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but um, no, the I mean, yes, the main setting in sacrifices. The background is the the One Hundred Years War, but I'm referencing there uh, Berserk. One Hundred Percent is the, the 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 war that's happening when when Guts joins the Band of the Phoenix and all that. So, yeah. uh, Band of the Hawk. Band of the the Hawk. Sorry, yes. <laughs> So no, I wasn't trying to make any historical reference there. It was just pure reference to the to the manga. Mm -hmm. But something that something that I was and I I had mentioned I had mentioned that 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 was present when it came to when it came to some of the setting notes and some of the um, naming conventions, but. What I find, what I, f what I found, vi what I found interest, what I found interesting, 
was the was um I guess the best way for me the best way for me to put it is the is um the inclu the inclusion of the inclusion of feats as a me as a means of of personalization. Mm -hmm. Since I think I honestly think feats get a bad rap. Oh, uh, the sole reason I, first I've never been fond of Five E's approach of using feats as alternative to ability score improvement. Obviously, um, yeah, it's a little bit. Uh... And, it's a tough choice. <laughs> and yes, the feats got out of hand in in third edition, but that was a failure of implementation, not of the concept itself. Mm -hmm. And 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 health. Um, there is there is a bit of a predecessor to feats in um AD and D second edition. Um, the proficiency system that was introduced there. It yeah. was it was introduced very late and was kind of undercooked, but it but there was something there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I, I'm a fan of, of feats overall because I, I didn't even realize they had a bad rep. <laughs> I wasn't really aware. But I think they're a great way of personalizing your your character and making it bit more unique especially when you have a wide range of selection mm -hmm. and and in a classless system it's just a no-brainer i think i think it, it's a perfect fit yeah even in a system with classes it's a good it's a good call to ha it's a good call yeah. to have yeah um, yeah i agree i mean thir 13th age has it with it even with its class system but the vast but there's only about a there's only just over a dozen feats that aren't that aren't tied to a um aren't tied to a feature whether whether it be mm -hmm. powers spells or ra or racial features that's the majority of how it handles feats as, as improving those kind of things yeah i'm i'm not aware i'm i'm not really familiar with 13th age either i i never never even glanced over it so i can't say i'm sorry it's in it it's an interesting beast uh, and since since you mentioned he, since you mentioned hex crawl earlier it it does it does sound like that was one of the goals given the um event tables that were that are in the full book uh, you mean sacrifice or thirteenth age <laughs> um sacrifice oh <laughs> yeah okay sorry yeah i, I just i love hex crawling so i thought it would be fun to have some hex crawling rules some decent travel rules and and the tools to generate to randomly generate uh, hexes and what you what you find in them less the terrain because the terrain is more tied to the map the region where you are playing which is the no man's land mm -hmm. so yeah maybe there's not that much terrain generation but i wasn't really concerned about all those things because i wanted to make uh, a bit simpler and straight to the point mm -hmm. game i mean it's just uh, it's 85 pages yeah so all i know people have access already to all those kind of tools you have them in almost any gm toolkit or gm uh, master and game masters or the dungeon masters guide i mean they all have terrain generation tables so i just I, I thought it wasn't necessary to yet again add something like that. So I went straight to the point. I went to, to what's unique with the setting, which is the type of uh, hexes you're going to find, always influenced to what's happening. I mean, the No Man's Land, which is where you're playing most of the time, is it's just is literally that. It's the, it's the battlefield between the two nations that are that have been warring for, for 100 years, mm -hmm. more or less. And... Uh, so it's it's completely ravaged by by war. So most of it is just uh, you you run into skirmishes. You you have a few wilderness areas, uh, 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 a, a couple of untouched settlements, but most of it is just a war ravaged area. So that's the type of content I wanted to 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 create for for the game. And and yeah, I did that. I just added. A lot of random tables for for all that, which also helps since I'm uh, 
I'm a big uh, <laughs> fan of solo games, and most of what I do is, is solo solo games. Mm. It's a great tool for when you're playing alone. To have all those random tables, it it just really helps. Yeah. And I will admit, when I looked at the critical hit table, that the, I my mindset immediately was, "Oh, your role, your role masterness is showing." <laughs> 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 yeah you gotta have critical tables even though th these are very basic compared to role master but yeah i mean i think they're fun they're cool i mean who who doesn't like a nice flashy crit well in this particular case it's a good it's it's a good way to re it's a good way to reinforce different damage types with um me with yeah. melee weapons because mm -hmm. If you look, if you look at any, if you look at any edition, um, how how often does slashing versus bludgeoning actually come up? Yeah, only when the when the creature you're attacking has resistance. That's it. That's basically it. And I've never I've never been fond of something only being relevant in these very specific circumstances. Yeah, it's, I think uh, that's that's just. It's coming back to what we were discussing at the beginning. Since the game is focused on being a, on the warrior archetype, and most of the characters are going to be that kind of character, it's it's fun to see what you do with your weapon and, and to see that there are differences between a, a dagger or a warhammer. <laughs> You're not going to to cause the same kind of wounds or the same type of damage. So I think it's. It's a very slight change, and, and and I think it's one that makes the game a little bit more fun. Yeah, especially given given some of the some of some of the leanings toward um toward toward dark humor that you that you can ha that you can have. Yeah, the things are are always fun with with critical hit tables like like Warhammer has shown time and again. <laughs> And I'd be, I'd be, any any time somebody loses an arm I'm pr at my tables, um, <laughs> somebody inevitably ends up making the Black Knight joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always. I I actually on my my ongoing game where I'm the forever GM, of course. Mm -hmm. Recently, we had a character who um, she lost a leg. And she kept going, and 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 the other day she lost a hand, and it was like, yeah, okay, this is really this is Monty Python completely. You 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 can't keep going like this. You have to retire that character. I don't know how it's even alive. So yeah, it's it's always fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, and. Yeah, I think I think it's at some stubbornness is nice and all, but it's but um at some at some point retirement should be considered. Then again, <laughs> yeah. I can understand why someone would be that stubborn when for starters they're attached to that character and second off part of the premise is being too angry to die. <laughs> yeah, and and sacrifice for sure. And on top of that you have the the option of of having prosthetics so that's always a nice trick and and it's a clear call to to gut so <laughs> yeah, it's it's a nice touch that uh, it fits into the lore perfectly to the berserk lore mm -hmm. now do you now with that in mind do you have you had mentioned you had mentioned that you've been doing some revisions. Do you plan on do plan on doing a few more before you dive headfirst into your next major project? Mm, not to the the core book, which is like I like I mentioned before, we are going to make a print run very very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I don't think I'm going to touch anything there, but I will be adding stuff to to the game. Uh, through the through the expansion I'm 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 working on, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, I, I, I think you saw already the, I, I made that small pamphlet, the, the commoner pamphlet, so you can start, instead of starting as a um, level three branded, you start as a level one peasant running for his or her life. And uh, yeah, it's it's a different experience <laughs> for sure. And and so I want to add uh, that kind of stuff uh, Kind of a modular rules that you can just plug in and and take if you want. I have a so far I have the a new new starter occupation the errant knight. So yeah, that's that's interesting. Also, a little bit more geared up than than a branded. Also, it, it, you start a level two if I remember correctly with the with the brand, with the errant knight. And then I'm adding, um, I don't know if you remember, but when you create the, when you create your branded, one of the things that you have to do at the end is the, see where your, where your wound um, is and uh, what, basically what you lost to be able to, to escape alive from, from the sacrifice ritual. So um, in the core book, it's just, Essentially, it's just cosmetic, or it's just just another role playing element. But I thought it would be cool to have a little bit of uh, mechanical, that mechanical weight to to those to those things. So I I made a, a few rules of each possible combination. It's like okay, if you have a missing arm, then this happens. If you have a scarred arm, then this, I mean, you know, you had all the, the type of wound table and then the location of the wound, mm -hmm. so the, the, all the combinations. And uh, so I'm adding that. I'm adding also dueling rules, which are actually very, very good, if I may say so myself. It's one of the, one of the best uh, game design I've done in a, in, in a few months, at least. I think uh, it's very, very fun. It's like a kind of a mini game. Where you have a set of uh, of moves, and your opponent has the the same set, and they you reveal them at at once, so they can counter each other, or they can uh, they can take advantage depending on the move that your opponent chose. So it's a bit more tactical, and I, I think it's fun. It's a, a, a something different. Of course, it's it's something that you can take. And use it only for maybe a special one one to one combat with a big baddie, or you can ignore it completely and not use it. I think it's a it's a very cool addition to the game. Then uh, I don't know. Let me see what else I was adding. Um, yeah, a few more combat options, new feats, some new combat maneuvers, of course. Uh, the the usual. I I don't know. A, a few of. Uh, that type of things that I think it's it's fun to have. So my goal is to have around I don't know, 30, 40 pages of, of new content and, and release it. So, but yeah, this is, as long as people enjoy it and I see people are liking the, the game, I will keep making stuff for it because it's very fast. It's fun. I have fun with it. It's a small, like I mentioned before, it's a palate cleanser. I don't have to crack my head open to to think about the rules and how it fits and all that because it's been done already it's I mean, we are all familiar with the dungeons and dragons we know the the rules so it's very easy to hack people are going to understand what you're saying without having to really um make a big effort so it's just fun it's fast to make so i'll keep i'll keep making stuff for it at least for for the time being mm -hmm. and with the with that in with that in mind, um, what would you say? What would you say were some of the big takeaways that you had since this is since um since you since well like like we mentioned before this is something you put you put together in about the span of a month. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I I don't know. That it, it's it's uh. But, uh, from a personal point of, of view, it's I think it's good for me to to focus away. I, maybe it's just for, even if it's just for a month, like I did for this game, from my big projects. Because when I return to them, 
I I see things in it with fresher eyes and uh, and I I don't know it. I dive into it uh, with with uh, with renewed energy, if if you could say. But about game design itself, mm, I, I don't know. I I don't I don't I can't say I have any big takeaway from from designing sacrifice aside from it's fun to work with a with a known system instead of creating something from from zero it was a also i realized how damn easy it is to <laughs> make stuff for for a game when you know there's going to be a gm there taking responsibility for for it for everything i mean you know there's going to be a person there guiding the situation and and trying to make it fun because when you're designing for a solo game you you know that you have to give the player all the tools and and options for them to be surprised by by the story to be able to create things on the fly i mean it's it's, it's a complete different mindset as a designer so so coming back to both uh not a not a solo system and a very very known already developed system like is d20 it was like wow this is this is so easy. <laughs> this is so fast. So yeah, I don't know if that's a if you could call that my takeaway from from all this. But yeah, that was my big surprise to to realize how fast and how fun and simple it is to to create stuff for for something that is already existed and, and established. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how to seeing how that develops. But with all of that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for being open to coming all the way back to the temple and enjoying the madness around here. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. It's it's always a lot of fun. So whenever you want, I'll be here for <laughs> to have another conversation with you. And anytime you see and. Of course, any anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then... On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!